Okay, so we were talking about the problems with gradient descent and as we go along in this lecture, we will try to uh, fix some of those problems. But for that discussion, it would be useful to understand uh, how to draw contour maps because that would just make our life easier in terms of drawing the plots and so on. And also contours is an, uh, or contour maps is an important concept to know if you are uh, doing machine learning, deep learning and so on, right. So the idea here is this, right, that visualizing things in 3D can sometimes become a bit cumbersome, right. And so uh, at least if images are static, then you can only view it from a certain angle and so on. So can we just uh, do a 2D visualization of this traversal along the error surface? And so to do that, we need to know what are contours. So let's look at this, right. So now again, we'll start with a 3D plot, right. So this is like a complex 3D plot that we have here, okay. And now I'll start with this question, right, that uh, if I were to take or let me just draw the contour map and then try to come at this question, right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw something which is called as a contour map corresponding to this 3D plot without telling you what a contour map is, right. So I'll just go ahead and draw it and then I'll come back and explain what a contour map is, right. So you can see what I've done here, right. So let me just point out a few things that have been done here. So what I've done is whatever surface was given to me at regular intervals along the z axis. So let me just straighten this so that the z axis is vertical, okay, whatever regions I'm at, ah, okay, this is good. Yeah, maybe this angle is good. So at regular intervals along the uh, z axis, I have taken slices, right. So these are the slices that I have taken at regular intervals along the z axis and I have also labeled the intervals, right. So this is minus 0.8, this is the slice at minus 0 0.6, minus 0 0.4, minus uh, 0.2 and this is at minus 1, right. So these are regular intervals because they are happening at intervals of 0 0.2. And similarly, I keep doing. So at every point to distance, I have taken a slice. Now, if I were to see this from the top, okay, and maybe I should delete. Yeah. So if I were to, um, yeah. So I've done these slices at regular intervals, and I've also labeled the slices. Now, if I were to look at it from the top this is what it would look like, right. And this is exactly what the contour map looks like, which is drawn on the right hand side, right. So a contour map is like the top view of a 3D plot such that you take slices at regular intervals and then imagine what the slices would look from the top and that's what you draw here, right. So at any level here, right, so any of these circles or any of the rings that you see here, they're not all perfect circles, but I can call them rings, any of the rings that you see on this side, note that for across that ring, the value of the z axis is the same, right, because that is how I have taken, I have taken a slice which is a parallel to the x, y axis, so it is at a particular level on the z axis. So this ring for example, corresponds to the level 1, right, so this ring here is level 1 ring. This ring here is level 0 0.8 ring, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and so on, right. So that is how uh, this has been uh, drawn, right. So every ring corresponds to one value along the z axis. In our case, or the x, y axis would be like the w, b axis and the z axis would be the loss axis. So every slice here would correspond to the same value of the loss function because across along the ring, the value of the loss function is there because you have taken a slice along the vertical axis, right. So you have a parallel plane, so the loss would be the same across that axis, right. And when you look at it from the top, uh, this is how it looks like and that is exactly what the contour map looks like. Now there are certain other interesting things to be said about the uh, contour map, right. And let me just get a hang of this. I want to put a certain view from which the point that I want to explain becomes easier. Okay, this is the view that I want. Now, what you see here, right, uh, on this plot here is that in some cases, the distance between the rings is large, right. Not just that, the distance between the rings is large here, 
but it's very small here, right? So I'm talking about the same two rings, right? So let me just highlight those two rings. So I'm talking about this ring and this ring, okay? I'm not circling the full thing because it will just become a bit untidy. So if I look here, the distance between the two rings is large, but the distance between the same two rings here is a bit small, right? It's quite smaller than what it is here. So why is that happening, right? And you can see that it relates to the idea of slope and that's why I wanted this other view here. So if you look at this, right, here, here the slope is very steep and here the slope is gentle, right? So now if I look at the distance between these two rings, So, if I look at the distance between these two rings, right? So, let me just delete things. Yeah. So now, what I was saying is that if I look at the difference between distance between these two rings, okay, and now imagine I am looking for the top, then here the slope is gentle, whereas here the slope is steep. So, wherever the slope is gentle, the distance between the two rings would be large, whereas wherever the slope is steep, the distance between the two rings would be small, right? So, the, the idea of steep and gentle slope was very important for uh, the discussion that we were doing, right? We needed to know in which regions was the slope steep and in which regions was the slope uh, gentle. And now the contour maps actually capture that information, right? So, you just need to look at the contour map and if I see that here the distance is large, that means the slope would have been gentle. Here the distance is small, that means in that region, the slope would have been very steep, right? So looking at the contour map, because the level information is also there, I can actually guess what the 3D surface looks like and there would be a contour map corresponding to every 3D surface, right? So let's look at one more 3D surface. The main takeaways here are this, that these rings correspond to levels on the loss axis and they are equidistant, right? That means they have been taken at equal distances on the loss axis. The other is, the distance between the rings tells us about the slope in that direction. If the distance is large, then the slope was gentle and I gave you, explained it with the help of this example. And if the slope was steep, then the distance was small as we saw here, right? So that's what the contour maps capture. So in short, they capture all the information that we are interested in when we are talking about gradient descent based algorithms, right? So let me just look at uh, one more example, right? Let me take a different function now. Suppose I take this function, okay? This is what this function looks like, right? Now, let me try to uh, guess what the contour map would look like, right? Uh, or rather, let me just draw the contour map, right? This is what the contour map looks like. And here again, you can see that here, Here the distance is large and does it correspond to my intuition that the slope would be large in that region? So let's see that, right? Indeed the slope was, sorry, the slope would be uh, gentle in that region, right? So wherever the slope is gentle, the distance between the rings is large and wherever the slope is steep, for example, here it's very steep, right? So in this region, as you can see this, if I look at the plot on the left hand side, these here the slope is very, uh, Here the slope is very steep, so the distance between the rings is small. Here the slope is gentle, so the distance between the rings is large, right? Uh, so that's that's the uh, idea captured in a contour map. Uh, you could take, there are many functions given here, so I would encourage you to kind of go back and try out different functions, right? So this is yet another function, I think quite uh, complex and you can try to draw the comp contour map for that. It looks quite horrible, right? but you could just relate it to the intuition that we had, right? And maybe inverse functions are a bit, uh, perhaps I should stay away from that, right? But this function now, now if I try to draw the contour map for this function, yeah, it again matches the intuition that we had that in the regions where the slope is, uh, yeah, this is what the function looks like. So here the slope is throughout very steep, right? So the distance between the rings is smaller here. 
Okay, so we'll come back to the original function that we had. Yeah, and I'll draw the contour plot here, and this is what it looks like. Right, so I think if you play around with this function, you will get a lot of insights into what the contours maps capture and the main intuition is about the slopes and the distance between the rings right so now that we understand what contour maps are right let's try to do this we will revisit uh, the gradient descent algorithm and now try to explain in terms of the movement on the contour map right so this was my uh, 3d plot and what you see here and here is the corresponding contour map right and you can see that uh, in this region, which corresponds to this region here, the slope is very gentle, hence the distance between this contour line and the next contour line, which is not even visible, is very large, right. And here, right, as I am going into the valley, as I am going into the valley, you can see that all the contour lines are very close to each other because the slope is very steep there. Again, here, as you can see, uh, the here the slope is gentle, so the distance between the contour lines is high. But as I keep coming down, the slope becomes sharp, and my distance between the contour lines decreases. Right, and same thing you can see uh, everywhere. Right, wherever the slope is sharp, you will see that the distance between the contour lines is smaller. Now, this entire gradient descent algorithm. Now, I could just visualize it on the uh, contour map itself. Right, and here you have both in parallel. So these are the two views that we have the 3D surface and its contour map at the bottom, then the contour map and what happens actually to the sigmoid function. Right? So, let us try to look at both these views and get comfortable with them. Right? So, just as the point was moving on the 3D loss surface, you can also show the point moving on the 2D surface. So, now I just have the WB plane and now can now I can see how the loss function is imposed on the WB plane right? because I can draw the contour map. And the contour map gives me all the information, right? It tells me what the loss levels are, right? It tells me what the loss levels are. I can see all the loss levels here. And also by looking at the difference between the loss levels, I will know what the slope looks like. And now here again, I see that in this region here, right? Where the slope was sharp, there is a sharp uh, movement. There is a rapid movement which happens. Let us play it again. So, now the slope is gentle. So, it is moving very small so slowly on the 2D contour map here. And then it as it moves towards the uh, steep region, now it will speed up and then again it enters the uh, shallow or the uh, gentle slope region and then again it will uh, move slowly. right? And now I can just get rid of this 3D view. I will just work with the 2D view where I have the contour map. I know what the loss is, that the loss is high. So, this is color coded. So, where for dark red means high loss functions, uh, dark blue means loss, low loss regions, and there is a gradation from dark red to dark blue, right. So, pink would mean somewhere in between, and this is what the pink here is, right. And now it is moving on this 2D plot, and I can see what is happening. So, now I have reach close to convergence. So, my points are almost on the sigmoid function and earlier I was moving very, very slowly when I was at this point, right. And now as I am going to enter the valley, you will see a sudden change in my WNB, a very large change in my WNB and the entire shape of my sigmoid function will change, right. And now I have entered the valley, I am close to convergence and slowly, slowly moving so that these two points become completely on the sigmoid uh, curve. They are not completely on the curve yet slightly off, but it will slowly move towards that conversion. Okay. So, now we know how to see a 3D plot and imagine what its contour map would look like or the other way around that look at a contour map and understand what the 3D plot could have looked like, right? Because we know that these were the regions of gentle slope the and the lost levels are marked. I have not marked the actual levels, but I have just color coded them. So, wherever you see dark red, you know it is bad and whenever you see dark blue, you know it is good. Okay. So, we will end this module here. So, we know about uh, contours now and now we will uh, try to go back to our discussion on gradient descent and see whether we can fix the problem that we had discussed.